Hey everybody, it's Ben and Karen. How's it going? Go us. Thanks, Farty Party, for subbing. Yeah, Jeremy Silman died last night. Uh, he had a long illness, it said, but it didn't say what he died of. A long illness. And um, I thought it would be nice to look at some of his best games as a memorial to his passing. Thanks, CL Smith 15. Yay, thank you for the sub. He, he was better known as an author than as a chess player. Um, at most of his chess, like 95% of it, was played in the 70s and 80s. So a lot of you weren't alive yet. Uh, thanks for the 41 cents, Farty Party. And uh, he was an IM, and his peak FIDE rating was 2420. Uh, he was 69 years old when he died yesterday. And uh, I found some games from the 70s and 80s that we can look at and analyze. And I didn't realize until just the last half hour or so that some of his openings were similar to mine. He played sort of like I did with white and black, which is weird. Uh, the Jay Dizzler, thanks for subbing and starting the train. Go you. That's my favorite university. Go you. We're very close to level two. Amazing. Um, he was, his U.S. chess rating was quite high. I think he was between 2550 and 2580 for quite a long time. So he was one of the five strongest IMs in the U.S., but he didn't play in a lot of norm tournaments. Uh, he didn't play a lot in Europe. And in the 70s and 80s, there was like three norm tournaments a year. Now there's norm tournaments in Charlotte and St. Louis a lot. So, and, and California and in Texas and so forth. Um, I want to read his Wikipedia. Because I, I had it up, but maybe I got rid of it. No, there it is. So he was born August 28th, 1954 in Del Rio, Texas. Um, I like the way it has his date of birth here. Mm -hmm. And it says in the next sentence, he was born on that date. That's good. Because you make sure if you forgot, you read it, mm -hmm. you read it again. He began playing chess at the age of 12, which is quite old for somebody to become a top player and top author. He won the American Open, National Open, and the U.S. Open, and he was the coach of the U.S. Junior National Team, and he became an IM in 1988. Uh, he wrote over 35 books, mostly on chess, but also on casino gambling, as well as articles for Chess Magazine, such as Chess Life and New in Chess. He wrote many articles and puzzles for Chess.com. Um, he was the professor of a video course produced by the teaching company as part of his great courses series. He was the chess consultant for the Harry Potter film, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Monk and Malcolm in the Middle. Um, he was uncredited for his work on the Harry Potter movie. We have a whole bunch of those great courses. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he did one. Yeah. And uh, so forth. So he wrote a lot of books, and uh, some of them are listed here. Reassess Your Chess and Amateur's Mind and Complete Endgame Course are pretty popular books. Um, he self-published. The name of his publishing company was Siles Press. I think it has to do with him and his wife's names, like Merged or something. Mm -hmm. Come on, Hype Train, let's get going here. Rawr. Yeah, and, and speaking of um, the complete in-game course, Spencer and I, um, on when I used to stream on my channel, we went through the entire Silman's in-game course, and we have those videos on YouTube, so check it out. Yeah, and there's a playlist, so you can see all the Silman yeah, videos. Yeah, it's a playlist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lawful Waffle, you know about it. Yeah, we went through the whole book. Thanks, Takan, for putting us at level two. You're the best until somebody gives more. 
my brother's coming tonight, but it's going to be after this stream, so you won't see him again. But you got me and Karen. <laughs> and, and he'll have been here. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, when is he going back? Tomorrow morning after breakfast. Oh, he's going to go ahead and go back. Yeah, he'll drive and get home about 11 p.m., I guess. Okay. Something like that. So no streaming. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the subton con. And how's it going? <clears throat> That's when you also stream with that young fella who had a crush on you. Maybe. Thanks, Cage Bruno. No. 200 bits. Obi didn't have a crush on me. I've known Obi forever. And Obi just got married, actually. He did? Yeah. I what? saw it on Facebook. What? It's not like that. Obi's, you know, theoretically could be. But he had son. a girlfriend for 30 years. Oh, then yeah. they broke up and he married somebody immediately? Pretty quickly. It wasn't yeah. immediate. <laughs> yeah, Obi's a really nice guy. I met him even before I met Ben. From my um, tournament chess, I met him in a tournament. But Go anyway, hype train! Yeah, he just got married. She looks cute. Um, that's all I can know from the picture. <laughs> yep. Known for his responsible driving habits. I don't get it. Well, what does that mean? Did he, I don't even know. I don't recall. I wonder if C.L. Smith was in the car with Ovi once. I don't know. Jimbo Matthews gifted a sub. Hooray. Thanks, Jimbo. He, he told me he drives like a oh, maniac. Oh, well, I've never witnessed He's that. a maniac. <laughs> but, yeah, he looks real happy he got married. And the past girlfriend... That he dated her for a while. Mm -hmm. She was a goddess. New one's pretty cute too. Thank you for the gifts up, Jimbo. Well, shall we start? We did start. We started several minutes ago. I mean, with the games. Oh. I was trying to, you know, go for the hype train. Oh, did Usually you finish I, all the Wikipedia stuff? Yeah. Okay. Usually when I start the games or do anything, then they stop doing the hype train. And then I go, boo, which I should <laughs> do. Did anybody watch Nakapuki versus Magnus? Or did you all watch it? It was, it was must-see TV. I didn't get after, to see After it. the match... Carlson said he was disappointed. He said, you know, if I play my best, I just crush everybody. So I, the fact that I barely won, I don't even feel like I won. Is that what he said? Yeah. He really said that? Yeah. Yeah, he said if I don't crush people, then it's not even like I won. He said he played bad today, and he felt bad before. He knew he was going to play bad, so forth. Yeah. Ma'am... Hikaru was bobbing his head. God damn. When when he has a winning position or that mm -hmm. he did win, he really starts bobbing his head. Then it's got crazy. Then he usually stops during the next game. Thank you for the sub model wrong. Thanks, model wrong. You're the best. I just thanked him. Yeah, I did too. All right. <laughs> Go hype train. We need a hundred bits or two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in the middle of the match, uh, Magnus lost five and a half out of six. And then uh, he came back at the end of the three minute after he changed his shirt. And he said it was a cooler shirt, like he was too hot or something. <laughs> Why does Magnus's hair look like that? Because that's the way he wants it to look, I guess. Well, I'm glad it was competitive. Mm hmm. You know, whoops. What is going on? I'm calling you. That was me. <laughs> Hello? I can't talk. We're streaming now. Okay, bye. Let me tell him what to, He says he can't get the dogs in. It says I missed a FaceTime call. That was me. I know. Ooh, lights by Karen Chess. <laughs> yeah, you know. 
No, we couldn't get past 91%. Boo. We're just two old people. That's because it's not a prime number. Struggling with technology. Mm -hmm. Another 20 years, we'll need help dialing a phone. 20 years? I'm not going to be alive in 20 years. <laughs> uh, give Ben more money so he can keep streaming. Exactly. Yeah, Jay Dizzler, go outside and beg for money and then donate. Hooray. <laughs> okay, so first game is from 1980. Nine. Nine. And it's Jeremy Silman White against Charles Van Buskirk. And this was played in Santa Barbara in an open tournament, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, Silman's White. He plays like me. Queen C2 Nimzo Indian. That's in my wheelhouse. You know, this is how I play with White. A3, Knight F3. And actually, this game follows my game with Svetizar Gligorich. Also played, no, well, played in 1988. That game was agreed drawn because he was too famous to beat. So this is, this is a theoretical line and it's also my game with Gligorich, like all of this is. And possibly we agreed to a draw here, but we might've made one more move. I don't know, me and Gligorich. And Yasser Sarawan has won a couple of nice end games here with White. Typically, White gets a queenside majority by just pushing his pawns and getting a lot of space. And Black's bishop suffers. And so forth. Okay, so he played b6. Get his bishop out. b4. Bishop b7. White plays f3 in this line because it's hard to get the bishop out without blundering this pawn. Mm -hmm. Now it's easier. Also, we're fighting for the e4 square and for a sandwich. Rook c8, knight b5, he wants to play knight d6. There's a hole, there's a hole. Okay, and then black played knight e8, which prevents knight d6. Then bishop d3. Now black can kick out the invader, but he didn't feel like he had to. He could play a6, but he just played king f8, get his king to the center. Rook, F, rook hc1. Typically, you want both your rooks on the queen's side because you're going to push your queen's side pawns. Like that. And so you don't want to play rook ac1 because this rook on h1 has nothing to do. Okay, king e7, c5. White could also play a4. This is a typical position you would see from this opening. Okay, black played d6, which is engine approved. cb, ab, rook c8. Could take either way on c8. He took with the bishop to keep his rook here. <clears throat> Engine says that's fine. A4. Now white has two to one on the queen side, and he can easily make a passed pawn. Conversely, it's very difficult for black to make a passed pawn. However, material is equal, and black's pretty solid. So it should be a draw, but white's the one pressing for the win. Play d5. Now he could play knight d6 and trade pieces. A5, getting his passed pawn going. Black played H6, probably to make sure bishop takes could never happen, in case he's playing Fisher or something. King C3, BA, rook takes A5. And black doesn't want to trade rooks because the passed A pawn is difficult to stop with the white king going to B4 and all of white's pieces near the A pawn. Thanks, Caged Bruno, for 400 bits. So black played rook b8. Again, the engine says white slightly better, but it's still in the draw zone. Rook a7 check. Rook b7. The engine doesn't like trading rooks. It wants to actually play bishop d7, which pins the bishop, but white can't take advantage of it. King b3. The king is going to be moving on up to the queen side. 
and we have a pass B pawn. Black traded, and now that the pass B pawn, and with the better king, white has a clear advantage. So white, white's doing well, just gaining more space on the queen side. Very difficult in practice to play black, because not only does white have a passed pawn, and black's bishop is sort of trapped, uh, white has a much better king. We have a question here. Is pawn takes better than rook takes? Pawn takes better than rook takes. In this position, uh, the engine says they're the same. I would play rook takes. I would, because I want to trade rooks. Because if I trade rooks, I can queen my pawn. But if there's a lot of pieces on the board, it's hard to queen your pawn. At least pieces in the way. White's pieces are even in the way. So I, I like rook takes, but the engine says they're about the same. I like the way black decided not to trade rooks here and then traded rooks like two moves later. So I don't, I don't like that decision. Now white's moving his king up. Obviously, it's more difficult to move your king up when black has a rook because the rook can attack your king and black rook can infiltrate white's position. But black doesn't have any counterplay. B6. Yeah, this is just how I like to play. Usually isn't this easy. King B4 stopping all checks. Bishop B5 check. Knight C8 check. Forcing the king away from the B pawn. Knight D6. Now white wants to play Knight E8 check, attacking the king and the pawn. The king has to go here which isn't good for stopping the b-pawn, then white's king just walks in. So black finally decided to get some counterplay with e5. Too late. Now, now you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. That's, that's a Simpsons joke, but only like one of a billion people would get it. So there's only 94 people watching. So... Uh, So in this position, he played king e7. Problem is, if you go to the e file, you lose this pawn. If you defend the pawn with king g6, then white takes on e5. Okay, so king e7, knight takes. Now black has two passed pawns, but they're not very dangerous, especially since white's taking them. And this is the key to the game is getting this H pawn because now white has a passed H pawn and a passed B pawn. So you can stop one, but you can't stop them both. Thanks, Thank Cage Bruno. Thanks, Cage Bruno, for the 300. No, yes. I said only one of a billion people would get the Simpsons reference I made. Lots of people watch the Simpsons, but they don't get my Simpsons references because they forget the episode after they watch it, which is weird. But, but. Man, it's questioning episode was 35 years ago so yeah okay so now white has a past h pawn and a past b pawn this pawn isn't dangerous the bishop stopping it the king stopping it and white has two extra pawns and then silman wanted three extra pawns then he traded knights now it's a fairly easy win because with my two pass pawns here and two extra pawns, I win. Okay, what would you play here with white? White played a move and black resigned. Um, let's see. Thanks, Wes, for subscribing. You're the best. To achieve peace, you must prepare for war. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Well, I, I guess so. 
That's actually from the first real episode that wasn't a Christmas episode called Bart the Genius. That's the first Simpsons episode. Now, there's a Santa's Little Helper where they get him at the racetrack, but that's considered a Christmas episode. Bart the Genius is Bart steals Martin's paper and school and erases Martin's name and writes his own name. So they think Bart's a genius, so they send him to the genius school, which doesn't work out well for him. Yeah, I'm not sure what to play here. Keep looking. I already said I don't know. Yeah, but you keep looking. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'm, I'll look a little. Okay. High walled. Knop. Very Dutch. Probably Waldskop. Eek Ben Ben. Let's see if I go there. I, mean, I think it's H4. Correct. And then he might try a, four, a king F4. But yeah, but the problem with king F4 G3. is you ignore it. No, you just ignore it. Oh, I thought just, you would. You just move your king here. I yeah, the king, the king can't go anywhere from here. It's trapped. You can't go here. Oh, you so can't you, go here. you were just doing Oh, I see. Yeah, I just play here and threaten your pawn. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you'd have to go like G3 or something. No, and then I, I can make any... I can play bishop A6 then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now the engine says white's plus 35. Yeah, the important thing is to get this H pawn going. Mm -hmm. Now if they play D3, you can simply take it. You don't have to take it. Because when they play d2, you can play bishop b3. But right. there's no reason not to take it and just play h5. And then two queens, what else? Yeah, h4, you got it. Good job. Well, if, um, yeah, there's two pawns, you can't stop them both. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yay, Karen got the right answer. Go, Karen. After H4, Black resigned. That's that's the kind of game that I would want to play. It's the same opening, it's the same position, and he gets a pass pawn on the queen side, and Black is tied down and passive the whole game. That's no fun to have Black that game. That was no fun. Now, this is my favorite game, uh, and the reason is weird. On the internet... It says the guy's name is Harris, but it doesn't say what his first name is. So I thought that was funny. Jeremy gets two names. Harris only gets one. If Peter was here mm -hmm. and he's not, we would agree that his name is Harris Teeter. But since Peter's not here, we can't agree to that. How's it going, Scottish Demon Go? Is Bishop A6 wrong? Yes. It's bad, and you should feel bad. H4 was correct, as given by Karen. Then plus 35. And so forth. Okay, so he's playing Harris. This game was played in England in 1978. Now, let's see. Jeremy's 15 years older than me. And in 78, I was 9, so he was 24 or so. It doesn't say we're in England. This could be Hastings. It could be just some random town in England. I don't know. Okay, so Silman has the black pieces. That's why I put him at the bottom. Okay, E4, C5. Should they do markers for the games or no? Oh, yeah, we should do that. Okay. I didn't think Somebody do a marker for game two. Where's all of our mods? I don't see any mods here. The mods are all banned for not being here. They don't even know that they're banned. All right, good job. 
Okay, so they played a Sicilian, which was the style at the time. And Harris, whoever he is, he played the Smith Mora Gambit. And thanks, Strobex Gaming, for subscribing. Karen, in Europe, what do they call the Smith Mora Gambit? Um, I don't know. The Mora Gambit. They oh. don't recognize Ken Smith's contributions. Oh. He was a weak American player who wrote a book on it and studied it a lot. So in America, we call it the Smith Mora. Mora discovered it, and then Ken Smith liked it and played it a lot. He was 2,300 on a good day. Typically, it wasn't a good day. Okay, so he played the Smith Mora or the Mora. Okay, and then Black played the Refutation Way which is a six a mistake a lot of low rated players make like you watching now is knight f6 which gives white the advantage after e5 and then black can lose his queen if he wants and in some of the games i've played he does want to do that see how we win the queen mm -hmm. and there's other traps in that variation also but a6 stops knight b5 which is key in those variations. Castles, knight f6. Now e5 doesn't work because you, you don't have knight b5 in the key variation after takes. And then I take with the knight. And in this position, you would play knight e b5 if my pawn was on a7, but now you can't. So now black's just a pawn up with a queen trade. Okay, and black is purposely delaying the move e6 so his bishop can get out to g4 instead of being passive. This is the old school refutation from the 70s. And this game was played in the 70s. So, okay, so queen e2, bishop g4, rook d1, queen a5. Problem with, with uh, e6 is you're softening up your d-pawn. So black can try bishop f4 and e5. But e6 is fine. But he played queen here to get off of the place with his rook. And then he could play queen h5 next move and start an attack. So knight d5 was played. The engine approves. e6. Now in this position, the engine plays a very unusual move. It plays h3. I guess if I take, then you would take this and says white is actually better here. But he played knight takes f6. The engine still thinks white is doing fine, although I like black. h3, bishop f3, queen f3, bishop e7. So white has the two bishops. Black's pawns are compromised, and his king isn't very good. Uh, and white's down a pawn. The engine actually prefers white, although I guess it's not going to like the way white plays this game. So he played bishop b3, which is pretty passive. Queen e5, good square for the queen, defending everything, threatening knight to d4, etc. Now, in this position, Karen, mm -hmm. it looks like white can simply play bishop f4. I was just about to ask you about that. Right, wave. okay. Now, black has two moves that make sense. One is to take this, the engine likes white. Mm -hmm. The other is more tricky. It's knight here. And the idea is we're threatening the queen with check. So if we trade queens, then you know, black's up a pawn and black has a better pawn structure. Uh, and if black moves, if white moves his queen, you would think he would defend his bishop. But actually he can't defend his bishop. Because I can just play queen takes bishop. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah, I see it. Then you would do this and the engine says it's about equal. Okay, so he didn't play bishop f4. He played bishop e3. Okay, very reasonable. h5, the idea is to play h4 and stop white's pawns from ever moving. And that's what he did. Okay, good. Bishop a4, obviously very strong pressure on c6. Silman played rook c8. Bishop f4. Queen takes b2. Engine doesn't like this move. 
And the best move for white is one nobody would ever find ever. I'm expecting like Stockfish 16 to change its mind. Oh, it did. Good. Oh, no, it went back to the right move. It says A3 is the best move. Yeah, nobody's playing A3. Okay. He played Rook B1, which is tied for the best move. Queen takes, threatening the bishop. Now white made a bad move. White has to play bishop takes knight, and white's fine. But he played rook a1, and now after queen c4, black is better again. Black has three extra pawns. What else? Bishop d6. Now he has two extra pawns. Okay, in this position, Karen... Black has one move that gives him the advantage, and he played it. <laughs> so right. you have to see what you would do. Um, let's see. I'm doing well. I hope you are as well. One move to give back the advantage. Somebody suggested knight d4. Knight d4 is so bad, I can't play it. Wow, that's a bad move. I can't even play it. Yeah. Because it's illegal. It's knight's pinned. Yeah, I'm not sure. Keep looking. If it takes you all night. <laughs> yeah. In, in the song Paradise by the Dashboard Light, the woman in the song says, I can wait all night. Then, like, ten seconds later, she says, I have to know right now. Yeah, listen to the song. You'll see. Maybe, um, let's see, rook d8. Rook d8 is okay. Oh, go ahead. I don't the answer that. is b5. I looked at that, but then you unprotect the a6 pawn. Mm -hmm. which... the, the tactical justification is if uh -huh. this rook goes to c1, you can take the bishop with a queen. Right. You play bishop b3, I can play knight d4. And still have this. But your bishop's attacks, so you gotta do something. Yeah. Okay. So white delayed the decision and took the bishop here. And now I'll ask you again, because you like when I ask you. Actually I can't ask you because they're both good. I was gonna ask if you take with the knight or the king, but they're both good. So uh, took with the king. Yeah. That defends the pawn. Okay. Now bishop b three runs into knight d four. That's actually the engine line. So he played rook d to c one. Attacking the queen. Black played the best move. Queen d4. Rook back to d1. Queen to b4. Rook to b1. Queen to d6. Rook to d1. And now black played a very pretty win. Black's up two connected pass pawns. And the bishop is hanging. But he has some king issues, and his queen keeps, keeps getting attacked. Mm -hmm. He played knight d4. Now, in this position, your queen's attacked with check, and your bishop's attacked. So, obviously and frankly, you have to move your queen and attack the knight. So, he played queen e3. And black defended his knight, rook d8. Now we're threatening pawn takes bishop. So white played the only way to save the bishop. Bishop b3. And black played a move and white resigned. 
What move did Black play? Um. In fact, every move wins. And in fact, if it was White's move, Black would be winning. Black's two pawns for nothing. But this move ends the game. There's no reason to keep playing after this move. Let's see. After this game, the guy went and bought himself a first name. For once, the chat is getting the right move. Very good. That's also a good answer. The answer is fries. That's right. There's no sound when we don't make any sound. That's correct. <laughs> if we sit here and don't talk, there's no sound. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I was looking at queen b4. Queen b4 is excellent. It's not the move he played, but there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. He played a fancy move. Yeah? Yeah. Ready for the fancy move? Sure. Rook c3. I looked at that, actually. That forks the queen and the bishop. Right. So he, he, oh, I he, see. he resigned. Then but, you can go knight e2. Right, so he has to take, because yeah. otherwise you lose your bishop for yeah. nothing. And then you don't actually win material, but you force this position... Where blacks up two connected pass pawns for nothing. Mm -hmm. So this isn't fun to play with white. Yeah. There's, there's no hope. In fact, nice. F three is the best move because your pawn's hanging, and then you know your position's terrible. Mm -hmm. So he resigned instead of playing this lost end game. How's it going, Abdul? Yeah, I just didn't see it. Anyone find that in the chat? Nobody found it. Well, maybe. I thought you said somebody did find it. Well, everybody did, yeah. Oh. But they asked if anybody in the chat found it. Oh. Okay. And that's not necessarily like the greatest thing ever. It's just sort of cute. Okay. This is one of the craziest games I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of crazy games. But this one, this one's the top 10%. <laughs> If by I found it, I mean my engine did, then yes. Are we expecting any little fine golds? Fine golds aren't little, generally. From me? You're talking about from me or from know. the, or not from me, I guess. I don't know. I guess they mean from your, your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he did a marker game three, even though he can't. Who would be producing some fine golds? Here, make sure you marker game three. He oh. tried to, but he can't. Oh, thank you, bald squirrel. Yeah, I forgot. You know. Oh, Seal Smith did it. Oh, thanks, Seal Smith. Mm -hmm. All right, this is against Vincent McCambridge. He was also quite as strong I am. He still plays chess, I think, but not too often. Maybe he doesn't play anymore. I've seen him at some tournaments, but it's been 20, 30 years. <laughs> I was just thinking about that, C.L. Smith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so they played a Benoni, the modern Benoni. And Silman played a very aggressive line here with white, which I've never played. Uh, he played bishop f4. I play h3 here. He played bishop f4. Black played a6, and he ignored it, which is the aggressive line. 
He played knight f3 and just let black play b5. And then he played queen e2, and he said, you're moving all your pawns, but I'm moving all my pieces. So I'm going to play e5 and run you over. That's the idea is you let black do what they want because black's just making pawn moves, and then you crush them in the center. That's the plan. Okay, knight h5, attacking the bishop. Bishop g5. The engine wants to play bishop e7, but black played f6, which you should never do. Bishop e3. Bishop g4, pinning the knight. So they traded. Knight d7. And white has an obvious big advantage here. White has two bishops and more space and a lead in development. g4 is correct. Kicking the knight back. Queen g3, he wants to play f4. Queen e7. Bishop g2. And now black plays a move I've never seen in the modern Bononi. What? Black plays a move I've never seen in this opening. Okay. Play over a lot of modern Bononi games. You see certain moves you see. I thought you this, said I've never seen the modern Bononi. I'm like, no, what? this move I've never yeah, seen. Yeah. That's correct, C.L. Smith. Yeah. Yeah, the engine says he should play G5, H5, or Knight E5. But he played Long Castle. Mm. The important thing is to move all your queenside pawns, then castle. <laughs> yeah, the engine doesn't like that. Okay, then White Castled. What's the writing of? They're both IMs. They're um. both strong IMs. Yeah. Okay, H5. B4. Rawr! You got to bust open the queen side. Black played h4, which I'm not a fan of because that closes the h file for, I don't, that seems like a bad move. Queen f3. Now after taking, where did white move his knight? I'm not asking what the best move is. I just want to know where white moved his knight because the answer is funny. Um... If I told you the best move, you'd quit chess and never talk to me again. But I just want to know where he moved his knight, because that's the funniest. The funniest? Well, maybe, I guess knight b5. It's funny. <laughs> knight b1. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, are, are you guys sitting down? You're sitting down, they right? Can, I mean, blocks okay. in the rook. The best one. move. You ready for the best yeah. move? Are you sure you're ready? Because when I show you, you'll be like, that's not the best move. Is a4. Yeah, well, I mean, that's best to open on the A-file. That's the best move. Okay. The second best move you suggested, knight takes B5. Well, I was just... Yeah, then after takes A4, series. and black's king is no good. <laughs> okay, he played knight B1. It's typical in some modern Bononis to play knight B1 to get your knight to C4, which hard to do here. Okay, white's still winning. Knight e5, forcing the queen to a better square. Good. Knight e8. Bishop b6, attacking the rook. Black saved his rook, which is not a good move. Knight d2. And obviously, white has an attack and black doesn't. Black played h4 and blocked all his play. f5, trying to make it crazy. f4. The game gets crazier and crazier. At some point, it's so crazy... It can't mathematically get crazier. There is no crazier. Knight f7. Knight b3. So far very reasonable, just terrible for black. Bishop g7. It's funny e5. how the king has just been exposed forever, but mm -hmm. he's taking his time to get anything on that c file. I mean, yeah, black's king is going to get in a lot of trouble soon. He's getting all of his pieces ready. D, e... Rook check. Now it gets in there. Knight c7. Knight c5. E takes f4 is the best move. Queen f2 is the best move. God damn. Mm, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, now black has a lot of trouble here. There's a lot happening here that's bad. He played rook takes d5, confusing the audience. 
White played the engine move. Knight takes a6. See, there's good and there's not good. This is not good for black. Well, all of black's pieces are hanging and pinned. And he's getting mated. And his pawn structure is terrible. Look at that. Terrible. Bishop c3 blocking the rook. Knight takes c7. Rook to d2. And now what did white do to finish the game? He played the engine move. Want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Very good George quote. Let's stop off at that antique place so I can buy you a housewarming present. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what a good episode. Why did you let me drive all out here if you knew I didn't have a place? We don't like you, George. And we've always blamed you for Susan's death. Hmm. What about um, Queen F3? What? You moved away your queen that was attacked? Yeah, that's a good move. Because well, then I can get to the back, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the move. No, he played Queen takes bit Rook. Oh. Let's see. Then he took. Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? Well, I mean, you have this discovered check here. Mm -hmm. So if you move the knight, probably, let's see, if you go knight d5. Yeah. Now, this is amazing. Check the queen. It's so amazing, I don't believe it. Although I'm looking at it, so I guess I believe it. Knight d5 wins, and it's the best move, and he played it. Mm -hmm. The engine claims taking this pawn wins with check, and that this is winning for white. Man, white's down a queen for two pieces, mm -hmm. but black's king is no good. <laughs> I'm looking at the variation. It's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you play king here, your king's trapped. Then if you play king c8, I check and take your queen. Okay, anyway, he played knight d5 check, which is correct. Mm -hmm. And then... You can mm -hmm. take either one. He took this one. Check. And then black resigned. Black has to go here. And now we play a further Zwischenzug. We don't take the bishop. What do we do instead? Although taking the bishop does win very easily. But we have a slightly better move. Let's see. I mean, you can take the pawn, but let me see. Which pawn? Um, on g6. Yeah, that's the right move. I was just trying to see what happens mm -hmm. if the attacks with the rook. Yeah, you attack the rook and you attack the bishop. No, I said. And um, then you got rid of, these pawns are all no good now. That's not what I said. I said I was just trying to see what happens when they if they go rook h6. Yeah, so. but if you take the bishop and they take your knight, that's an even trade. Yeah. If you take the pawn and they take their your knight and you take their bishop, you gained a pawn. I know. And that's an yeah, important that pawn because I can boots. play like G takes F5 attacking your rook. Like yeah. More pawns. Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to calculate and see if there was another four. Anyway, four after four. knight takes E7 check, McCambridge resigned. That, we resigned. that was a crazy game. Except black mm -hmm. played like sort of loose, Lucy there. You were thinking of the original Batman? Oh. Yeah, let me refresh this. I used to watch that as a kid. That was great. The, one of my favorite scenes in the original Batman is Batman and Robin are having a discussion. And they have to get somewhere really quickly. I don't remember why. But it was really important. Like a bomb's going off in three minutes or something. So they have to get there. And then Robin says, like... Well, that's a mile away, and the world record in the mile is whatever, three, whatever it is. And then Batman says, we'll have to break that record. So they start running, and then they get there in time, and they stop whatever it's supposed to be. They had to break the world mile record so they could save everybody. <laughs> they just started running, and it like they didn't know how to run at all. But it was funny. They talked a lot, too, instead of running. They had a long discussion 
about how they have to get somewhere, but they weren't leaving until the dialogue was over. So, yeah, what a great show. R.I.P. Adam West. Michael Keaton said that as Bruce Wayne. Well, that's not the original Batman. That's just the first movie. Okay. Hmm? I'm just sending a quick message. Holy records, Batman. I like when they would get into fights and then these things would pop up like Biff and Ouch and Wowza or whatever. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what a great show. Okay. That was a good game. Now we'll look at his game from Lone Pine, 1975, against Lawrence Day, the famous Canadian IM, also RIP. One of the reasons I moved to Europe was because of his ex-wife. And don't forget it, Angela Day. I think she kept her name when they got divorced. I yeah. wonder if she's alive. Yeah, probably not. Okay. Yeah, there was a, a organization called the GMA, and she was like the, you know, she worked there. She was a paid employee, unlike, you know, Kasparov and Bessel Cock, who just invented it, and Timon and so forth. Oh, no, your channel name. Yeah. <laughs> Karen took control. I didn't take control. I just wanted to be included. I just want to be counted. I wanted to matter. It's called Onomatopoeia. Yeah, my favorite female chess player is Onomatopoeia Cramling. I mean, basically, I'm not doing all this work, you know, and not getting some kind of credit for it. This is, this is work to sit here. You may donate now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, he's still alive, Lawrence Day? Well, he showed me. <laughs> Thank he you showed me by being alive. I, I thought he was older than 74. <laughs> Next step is it's Karen and Ben. Hey, we, we contemplated that order, but it just sounds better the other way. You know, it's, it had to flow. Like Abbott and Costello. Costello and Abbott, terrible. Right, exactly, terrible. as I'm saying. Laurel and Hardy. Hardy and Laurel, terrible. It's got to flow. Probably because we just heard it a lot. Probably not any other reason. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. Isa de, Isa de. They played a Rui Lopez, which is weird because Silman was mainly a D4 player. But he decided to play Rui Lopez. That's right, salt and pepper. And this game was played in 75. D6 is an unusual move. Back into normal territory. Queen E7 is a very strange move. I've never seen such. Lawrence Day played his own way. He, he had his own openings. C4 is explosive. So they get to a King's Indian-esque type position. Always repeat. Now it actually looks like a normal chess position. Before it was all crazy. The engine says it's completely equal. This is an unusual trade. The knight's going to sit on d5 the rest of the game. So black played c6. Well, that seems weird for the bishop to be there. Here? Yeah. We can go back. Well, he went there because he took something. I know. You're right, it typically would be. I good. think it just misplaces the bishop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then they played the most positional game ever where they didn't do anything, but they solidified what was happening. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And the engine says it's equal. Got to be careful about losing this pawn because then queen side falls apart. 
Black decided not to trade queens. And here black could take this, but the engine doesn't want to take it because I could take and play e5. And I'm tripling up on the bubble up. Okay, so now black got this idea, which I like. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying I like it. Of playing king h7, rook g8, and g5. And playing for an advantage. White played c5. And black played g5. So it went from really strategical to really tactical, like all of a sudden. The engine prefers black. Now, you see I'm threatening this because you're pinned here. Yeah. So he played king f2. This is important as compared to king h2. The reason is, if you play king h2, h4 is annoying. Very annoying. Yeah. And the point is, if you play h4 now, which he did, now what's the only move for white? White has to resign if he doesn't play this move. But he played it, and he ended up winning the game. So... Um. The engine still prefers black until it doesn't. Let's see. Rook H1? Correct. Explaining the difference between king h2 and king f2. Yeah. Okay, black played king g7, which is the engine move. Now he played knight h5 check. King f8 is the only move. Queen c2. Hg3 check. And now white played the only move to continue the game. Otherwise, black, white's completely lost. But after this move, white's just much worse or close to lost, but you can, can keep playing. I mean, I'll go king g2. Correct. It's pretty much the only move. That's the only move. I mean, right. if you, anything else is a problem. Okay, bishop d8 is a mistake, giving all of black's advantage away. Black actually had to play the move d5, and then he'd be better. Bishop d8 looks good because you defend your pawn. Mm -hmm. Okay, now rook takes d6, which is correct. Takes, takes. Now, after taking this, now white's much better. Rook, queen d1. The engine wants him to play rook d1. This is equal now. Queen e7, not a good move. Queen d2, he wants to play queen h6 check. King e8, that's a blunder. Now white played a brilliant winning move. It turns out white has two brilliant winning moves. So I'll try to find one of them. Um, King e8 looks like a time trouble mistake. Although it was move 45, so I don't know. Sometimes the time control was 50 and 2 and a half back in the 70s, so it could have been. The chat's giving two answers, and they're both right. Let's see. This must have been a tough game psychologically for the two players. Because it was sort of boring and equal and nothing was happening. And then all of a sudden black played g5 and white played c5 and it was all crazy. And they're getting into time trouble.
Whatever you don't know, just think longer. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it has its limits here. <clears throat> you have two winning moves. No other move wins. Otherwise, it's equal. Let me see. see my brother texted me. Well, he did. He told me uh, like three hours ago he's going to get here at 940. And he texted me 11 minutes ago and said it's 100 miles. So 940 sounds about right. Everybody challenging me. Leave me alone. Darn, I don't know. No guesses? Um. I've never seen Maximums wrong before, but I've seen it now. Good job, Maximums. Proving you're not using an engine. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was looking at Queen H6, but I don't know. Mm -mm. The two winning moves are the one he played, Knight G7 check. So if you take it, I go here, and then that's no good. Darn, I forgot about that. Open okay, file. and the other move that wins <laughs> is E5 with the idea of Knight F6 check. If you take it, I play Rook E1. E5 is so strong that the engine does take it and loses its queen. It says that's the best. Because knight f6 check is annoying. Now watch this variation. Don't worry, I don't know why I couldn't see no, that. No, but watch this variation. I am looking. After queen e6, which looks like it stops knight f6, mm -hmm. now this is stronger. Because it forks the king and queen. Mm -hmm. So you have to take it. Then you get checkmated. So they're both like plus six. So either one was fine. He played knight here. Now queen h6 just hangs the knight. So maximums say no to drugs. Maximum suggested queen h6 here, but it hangs the knight. So he played knife f5 because that's one of our emotes. Mm -hmm. Expensive emote. Now the queen's attacked and the white queen's going to come in somewhere. Depending on where the queen goes. Yeah. He played queen c7, queen h6 check, knight d6 check, rook d1, and black's king is it's no good. The game concluded, queen a5, knife f5 check, king e8. He repeated, always repeat. Then he played queen h7, threatening queen takes pawn mate, and threatening queen takes rook. So he played rook f8, stopping both. Knight f5 check. Knight g7 check. Always repeat. Queen h4 check. And this is a surprising thing I'm going to tell you. Ready yeah. for a surprise? Mm -hmm. Black has more than one legal move here. I see it and go f6. Yep. What's the other legal move? Um... I guess queen g5. Correct. Okay, so f6, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Always play f6. Knife f5 check, refuting f6. Now the engine plays queen takes knight, giving the queen away. But a human wouldn't do that. And then he resigned. After king here, which he did not play, white has made in one. That's what happens when you play f6 and your opponent plays knife f5. Now you know what happens. Oh, uh, let's see. Queen d6? Mate. So in this position, he resigned. Yeah, Lone Pine was a strong tournament. That game went from black to having a strong attack to white having a mating attack. And like, it was like a three moves, it all, it all went wrong for Lawrence Day. 
And there's something in my eye. Is it your eyeball? Yeah, among other things. Probably an eyelash. I'll get it out later. Okay. Maybe help. <laughs> Always repeat. Yeah, but he could play King F4. So then we can't repeat. Is, is white winning there? Oh, yeah, E5 check. Oh, this is funny. I saw queen here, and I thought this was a good defense, but this is mate. So that's not a good defense. Yeah, it says everything is mate, but mainly E5 and queen D6. Okay, now, this is a, this is a fascinating game for one reason which I'll have to explain to Karen and to 95% of you. And there's the 5% of you where I don't need to explain. The player with white is famous, but he's not famous for playing chess. He was an IM. He's famous because of computer stuff. David Levy, if, you, if you're deep into computer chess, I'm not saying you are, but if you are, then you've heard of David Levy. If you haven't heard of David Levy, you're not deep into computer chess. And don't forget it. I have his book. Exactly. In the 1970s, David Levy was computer chess. My shoes are so squeaky. Mm -hmm. I stepped on something. Hans knows all about him. Did I mention butt plugs? By the way, Hans is 2-0 and in the World Junior. Oh, really? And then, well, he's the highest rated. Yeah. And then he, he posted a picture. He's, it's in Mexico City. Mm. He posted a picture of him eating tacos, and he said, these are slightly better than Chipotle. But he was I saw that. But he I was kidding. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, look up David Levy. Now, David Levy and Computer Chess, they're like that, son. And in 1978, unless I'm wrong, it could be 77 or 79, they had the North American Computer Championship at the Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit. And there were people there from all over the world with the terminals from the mainframes. And my dad and I went there, my brother maybe, I don't remember, probably my brother. And we watched the computers play each other in the terminals. David Levy was there. And we ate at the restaurant on the top of the Renaissance Center that was a spinning restaurant. So you'd see Canada, then D Detroit, then Canada. I remember that. I think it was 78. Um, however, I've never seen a chess game David Levy played. I've only heard that he's a computer guy, but he was an IM. So he played chess too. So nice. this game was played in Lone Pine, 1975. <clears throat> the same tournament from the game we just looked at with Lawrence Day. That sounds like an expensive restaurant. Yes. Yeah, I, I was afraid we weren't dressed up, and my dad had like a sport coat on. He said, your kids, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. I remember I put something down, and then it wasn't there because the restaurant was moving. So then I had to go get it. I don't understand this Ite guy. Everything he says is crazy. Where? Who? The bottom. Green tea? Ite. Oh, Ite. I'm sure the kid of David Howell and Levy Rosman would play Kara Khan. Terrible. You'd think that Levy Rosman or Rosman is so famous you could spell his name right, but nobody can. Even Levy spells it wrong half the time. Okay. Well, he's saying that it, it's... Oh, because this guy's David. Sounds like yeah. I've never heard of these other names, just David Levy. I got you. I got you, Ite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's saying that they... This is the kid of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, Jeremy Silman, well, he's a lot older than, okay. Uh, Jeremy Silman has the black pieces, and he played the Accelerated Dragon, which is what I used to play. Like, I played exactly like this with black. So I've had this position. I've had this position. Okay, and he played F4. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, we didn't do the marker. Oh, yeah, do a marker and say, go back three I don't minutes. Know if anybody did it. Do well, you can do a marker for this game and just say, go back three minutes. Okay. Wait, what number is this? Five. Look, I messed it up. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I know how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so F4 is the, like the aggressive move, engine recommended. Trying to play F5 and kick the bishop. Black plays B5, and this is very accelerated dragon-y. Like this is obviously an accelerated dragon. Everything is in the right place. Okay, now when you play b5 to get immense counterplay, you're blocking your queen from defending on the fourth row. So white gets to play f5. Now, uh, Jeremy Silman played a, a move I've never seen before. The engine says it's the second best move. The engine says he should take, take, and play bishop d7. And says white's slightly better. He played instead b4. Which is interesting. Okay. So white took the bishop, which is correct. Black took, which is correct. White took on f7, which is correct. Now you remember the last game, which was played in the same tournament as this game. Okay. Okay. When, when he took on g3 with check, I said, what should white do? And you said king g2. And that's what he played. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing. What should black do? Oh, okay. King and the F8. only move is king f8. That's yeah. the only move. That's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is the same move. <laughs> okay. Now, if you take with a queen, then your bishop is hanging, you know, horizontally and such. Mm -hmm. If you take with a rook, then black plays knight takes e4, and the complications favor black. When I say complications, like white can go here, and then queen e3, and, you know, it's too complicated. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's good for black. Okay. So black, white played queen f4. Okay, the engine says that white's better. Now, Silman made a mistake. They want him to play king takes pawn now, which is funny. He played queen takes a2. And then white made a mistake. Chess is hard. White has several good moves here, but not the move that he played. But the other moves were good, just mm -hmm. not the one he played. Uh, bishop takes f6 is good. c5 is good. Bishop f3 is good. He played e5. Okay, now white's still better, but it liked white's position a lot more earlier. Takes, takes. Queen a3 defending the pawn on e7. Now it wants white to just take this pawn, but he played bishop f3 attacking the rook. Now, the correct move for black, according to the engine, was knight g4. Then the engine changed its mind and played Silman's move, rook b8. So this is a crazy position. Like, if anybody does something wrong, they're going to lose. That's why I was wondering how the queen on e5 can just sit there. Yeah, I would not cra be crazy there. position. Remember, if the knight moves away, queen e7 isn't mate because the queen can retreat. Always retreat. Okay, Levy played rook a1 which is a mistake. Then black played queen takes b3. Now in this nutty position, which makes no sense, the engine says it's equal. All zeros. Bishop h6, double question mark. Yeah, knight takes e5 is sad, yeah. Okay, so he played rook takes a6, which is a mistake. The correct move is rook a to e1, threatening queen e7 mate. And the engine says it's equal. He played rook a6. Now black is better. Black played queen b4 x clam. That's a tough move to find. But he wants to defend this and this. Rook c6, confusing the audience. Rook c6, bishop c6. C2. 
Man, I keep stifling a yawn. Okay. Now White played rookie, played C5. I'm sorry. Got up so early. C5 blocks the defense of this pawn. So. Okay, so rook C8, threatening everything. Rook E1. Okay. Good position for Karen. Black has one move that wins, otherwise black is worse. But he has one move that wins. Um, it's not easy. Let's see. He won the U.S. Championship three times, screw in one. Your answer couldn't be more wrong, I'd say 12 win. So far, the chat's doing very badly. Got one right answer and 10 wrong answers. One of the wrong answers is rook to d8, which hangs mate in one. White's threatening checkmate. So if you allow that, that's your answer is wrong. So I was looking at <laughs> knight d5. Knight d5. And then bishop takes check. Oh, you got three. And then if king there. takes, this is mate. Darn. Well, go ahead. Keep looking. Right. The chat's having trouble with it. I keep looking at it. I just don't want to hold up the stream because I'm slow. Hold up the stream. This is the last game. We have to spend 40 more minutes on this game. <laughs> no, I just, you know, if I'm slow is all. I'm You're saying. not slow. Everybody I has the wrong answer. I am slow. You're, Bonarici's like, take your time. I am thinking. No, this is hard. Yeah, I agree. Silman's out there writing books about the proper chess strategy, positional play, strategical play. Then his games are all insane where all the pieces are hanging. And the computer evaluation does that. Man, the truth hurts. Missed the question? What should black play? Let's see what happens if I go there. The chat's starting to get the right answer. Although one guy had it a long time ago. And then everybody copied his answer eventually. King takes f7, loses out of hand to queen e6 check. King f8, queen takes rook check. And then white mates in three or four moves. You have Silman confused with Pandolfini. Silman's a good chess player. Why would you confuse the two? Pandolfini would be like one of the one of the weaker players in the chat. Oh snap! Yeah, they're around the same age. I guess you could confuse them. Both wrote books. So I'm not sure. I was looking now. I mean, I've never right on it. But I was looking at Rook C7. Correct. Oh, it is Rook C7. Yeah, that's the only move. Yeah, because you can't take it. Right, because Queen takes mate. 
And I was looking at all right. the different permutations of what happens if the rook moves here. What moves here. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like if rook, you know, rook can't leave the back rank mm -hmm. because you got all these other things going on. Yeah, black's actually winning here. Okay, mm -hmm. white played queen e3, and black played the most amazing winning move. But it's not the only winning move, but it is the most amazing. There's no doubt that this is the most amazing winning move. As Bender would say, tactics 101. Although you would say politics 101. But. Oh, I better know what it is. Let's see, because if I can get that bishop on d4, I have a skewer there. I don't know. Maybe if I move the knight here. Oh, yeah, because he he's got to stay on. I see. I like the way this is just sits here the whole game. Yeah, that is funny. Um, One of the things I met Silman once. We were at a chess camp in Arizona, and there was a blitz tournament, and we got paired and we drew, and or maybe I won on time, but I think we drew, and uh, although I might have won on time. He, he told me when he quit chess, he said, my last 35 USCF rated games, he had 32 draws. Then that's when he decided to quit chess. Yeah, that camp was like 20 years ago. Yeah, he stopped playing chess at a relatively young age and was writing a lot of books. He did a lot of chess.com stuff too. Also, he spoke in class today. I don't know, I just can't see the follow-up move. Okay, so this is a was, funny tactic. Okay, it's looking okay. at knight d5 uh -uh. again. Okay. okay, you see how the queen and the rook are attacking e7? Mm -hmm. So if you play rook takes bishop, you get mated in one. So if the queen or rook moves off of e7, you could play rook takes bishop. Yeah. So the winning move is to promote. Uh. And the queen or the rook has to take it, then you take the bishop. That's funny how that wins a piece. Another winning move, which is more impressive, is h6 takes, queen takes rook check, bishop takes, and you control the queening square. That's oh, also a very impressive win. Nice. Man. Okay, but he played queen. You didn't get it either. Rook c1, two. and then he took the bishop, and then and then white resigned. Yeah, these are hard. These are games are also interesting. Yeah. Yeah, if a guy's played chess for 30 years, he's a good player, you can find interesting games if you try. Yeah, these games If you don't try, then you can't. Interesting. Right. I've never seen a chess game with David Levy before. I only know him from computer stuff. <laughs> uh, he spelled Le Levy Rosman wrong again. Hey, and it was somebody else. Hey, Crazy Egg. Yeah, we need to get some, like, change our background and get a new camera. And stuff. Acuna hit a home run, so he has 40. Let's see what Dana said. I wanted Olsen to get to 60, but he's not going to get to 60. He might get to 57, 58. We're doing well. Mm-hmm. Karen, you pretty much saw Bishop H6. Wow. Yeah. Acuna's 4068. Good, good. I'm no good. I don't understand that. <laughs> so, Acuna plays for the Braves. Yeah. And at some point in the season, he had 40 home runs and 60... Stolen bases in the season. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever done that, ever, ever. And now he has 40 and he'll have 70. He's like 
the record's getting greater and greater. So the reason you don't have both is one means you're really fast and one means you're really strong and big. If you're big and strong, you're not fast. These statistics wash over me like... Yeah, but he's that means he's both. Mm. Thanks, Enzi and Hero, for 200 bits. Warm piss. <laughs> yeah, not good. Are you familiar with chess form in Manhattan <laughs> since before you were born? There used to be the chess mart, too, across the street from each other. I'm getting all this. In the village. Text. Hang on a second. But you weren't born yet. <laughs> That's right, Yvonne Chuck. Yvonne Chuck's playing chess right now. He's playing in a tournament. Mm -hmm. There's a tournament going on. It's a rapid tournament. I, it's in... Uh, I forgot where it's. It's in Europe somewhere. And Anand's playing, and Kramnik's playing, and Svidler's playing, and Gelfand's playing. It's like the old guys tournament. And after four rounds, Wesley So had zero. Oh, wow. Really? I'm like, what? He's like the only guy who's not old. That's surprising. Yeah, and Anand's in first, and Nipo, Nipo Nishi's playing. And Gelfand was doing well. That's the last person. I, Gelfand's older than Anand. God damn. That's old. <laughs> Wesley had zero out of four, then he won his fifth round game. Oh yeah, and Anand like played some crazy queen sack that was winning against Wesley and beat him. And then he stood up and said, gotcha, bitch. Do you have any other games? No. Did you t and tell the story that you were talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, you already told. Mm -hmm. I, just to sure. I just told it like three minutes ago. I just want to make sure you didn't, I didn't know yeah. which stories you had. Mm -hmm. right. He didn't know all the geezer theory. Gal fan still plays chess? Yeah. You guys are amazing. We are amazing. What an energy. We do have an energy. But do we have a energy? When was the last time you went to Washington Square? God, I don't know. 15 years ago, maybe. The last time I was in New York, I went to um, the one that's near Midtown, not the Washington Square, the other one. Bryant Park? Maybe. Might have been Bryant Park. I don't know. Whatever that place is called. And so forth. What were you talking about? New York City chess outside. Oh. And so forth. Anyway, don't forget to buy Jeremy Silman's books. They're good books, especially for you guys. Yeah. And also, you should go to our YouTube channel and look at the playlist, Jeremy Silman or whatever it's called, Silman Chess, and you'll see lots of videos about Jeremy Silman's books or book, whichever's funnier. Yeah. Which, which book was it? Was it more than one book? What well, the videos on our YouTube page. No, it was just the it was the complete in game course, mm. which is pretty thick. It's like Bible length. Yeah, we went through the whole thing. If you want to listen to music, go listen to music. So I, you're banned. Yeah, I've never read Reassess Your Chess, but I think we have it. Yeah, I know we have it. Yeah, that's sad that he died. You want to do 20 minutes of puzzles? Yeah, we could do some puzzles. Boo! I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to go to karaoke or not. Because even if we end at 9... Karaoke, my wayward son. I wouldn't go up there till 10, so that's like another whole hour. I just don't feel like going, but Karen's going. So that is a reason to go. I would have preferred to go tomorrow night. Dad, yeah, read the book, Je suis. We've had this several times. That doesn't mean anything. It's I'm always the same it. answer. I'm not going to remember it.
At least I noticed that I was in check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bonus. I mean, it seems like I want to avoid being checked. Let's see. Let's see, I shouldn't go there. We're doing great. How are you doing, Backspace? Don't forget to start a train. It's time for our second train of the stream. Somebody do exclaim stats so I can complain about how many subs we have. Thanks, Tensor Extension. Ooh, 9-11. I'll never forget that many subs. We need more subs. It's an emergency. Oh, snap. Thanks, Crazy Egg. All right, time for everybody to give 20 subs. That stolen credit card you have, you know what to do. Yeah. It's almost 2 a.m. in Wales. Nobody walked past. You would think people have a lot of money because, you know, they're whales. Darn, I'm not sure. I can't go there. $800 at Marshall's. Yeah, what a dumb use of a credit card. Yeah. I agree. I don't know. Okay. So when you move your king, yeah. you're threatening rook a8 with mate. And then white's going to play knight a6. And then when you play rook a8, you're threatening mate. And in that position, your king needs to be on e8. If it's on e7, there's rook takes pawn check and your rook's hanging. If the king's here, there's rook c6 check. If the king's here, there's rook takes c7 check. If the king goes here now, I can play knight here check and take on c7, defending a8. So therefore, by elimination, this is the move. Then we go here and then we mate. I do remember it now. 23.90. Now that I see this A couple people got it. I remember it now, darn. Does d6 check also work after king e7? Yes, everything works. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> Do you know if Silman had any kids or anything? I don't think he did. No. He might have, I just don't think he did. I know he was married. Was he married? Once? Yeah, he was married. Yeah, he and his wife were in the publishing company. It was, but just that was his first wife. I think so. Yeah. Hmm. I don't. I don't know really. Yeah. My understanding. All right, I have my answer. All right. Let me see. Let's go hype train. Hmm. Don't forget when this stream's done that you cut me a piece of cake. Okay, let me do this stuff. Yes. Let's see. That's there.
No, the cocoa bean. That's that's his mistress. Should I just play rapid to improve? I don't know. The main way to improve is to watch my stream and donate. And the second way is to study chess a lot. Playing rapid probably doesn't hurt. Yeah, donating five or ten subs is the path to chess improvement. Look at the big brain on Bonarici. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he gave the answer some other people gave. But... You got it real fast, so it can't be that hard. Exactly. Well, I mean, you're real good, but I'm just saying, like, you banged it, banged it no, right No, but the way out. you said it was funny. I just can't really, you know, figure out. I know you don't look at the answers, Bonarici, because they're always wrong, even when they're right. <laughs> Why am I being forced with ads constantly? Because you're not a sub. You should sub to the channel and support the channel. Then you'll never get any any ads. Go Martian Mike. Time to sub it up. Avoiding all ads. Wait, there is an answer here? There is. The more tactics I do, the worse I get. Am I just doofus brain? You could be Rufus brain. It's not clear yet. It's either Rufus or doofus. We don't know yet. Also, there's the triplet. So, oh, they can go there, though. I keep forget. I have to keep seeing the move, and then I forget the move, and I go, "Oh yeah, they can do that." And then I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that changes it. My answer is the same as Bonarici's. Nice. This is chess. It's not funny. Chess. No, you gotta do it the other way around. You can't learn anything unless you donate. Oh, it's Friday, so that means that trying to learn is playing his rated game at the club. Mm. Then he'll text me at midnight and tell me how he did. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess Queen C2. Yeah, I used to have a but, shirt when I was a teenager, and it said Queen C2 exclamation mark. Yeah, but, that was my favorite move before Bishop F1. All right, well, go ahead. I couldn't really see how to continue because mm -hmm. um, I really wish the Queen weren't there so my knight could be there. We need 89 subs, stat. 
That's right, Bone Ricci. Very good. I'm good, brother. How are you? Oh, I see. I think it's Bishop C1. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't visualize it until we got there on the board. Night age six check. They play one game a week. A lot of chess clubs do that. It's Panda Bear. It's Xenoid One. Um, I see. I have to take it. Let's see. Yeah, so I guess you see, yeah, you have to take the knight. Yeah. Right. If you move your king here or here, then it's queen f6. Yeah. Eight. Right. Then we just take the bishop with the knight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Twenty six thirty. I was just trying to see what happened after that, but then it stopped. <laughs> You're going for thirteen tomorrow. Thirteen hundred. Well, good job, big Benito. Well, Archer's playing in a tournament tomorrow. Go Archer. Mm -hmm. He's playing in a rapid. All right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You did good. You saw that one. I had to think really hard about each move there. Mm -hmm. I'm so slow. I was always slow. <laughs> I solved it. But... I got the yawns. I got up so early. I like the mornings. I got up and I walked for two. I walked 5.6 miles. I did it earlier than usual. I had a really good day because the next had a lot of energy. So I got to remember that. Nobody in the chat seemed to... Oh, somebody in the chat got it. Most people are wrong, though. That's per usual. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see how the Braves are doing. The Braves are up six to three in the sixth. Riley has one hit and he has four RBI. Did did wait a minute? We didn't score four runs in any inning. What? 
How does Riley have four RBI on one hit? It's not a grand slam because we don't have... So he must have got a three-run homer, and then he must have got an out and somebody came in. I guess. I guess that's what happened. For many players in Germany, you are a legend. Really? Not. I don't want to say many. Maybe for a couple. So I like Queen D five, but yeah, the Knight here check. Oh darn! That's like the worst move on the board. No, it's not that bad. Your queen's still hanging here. Yeah. But yeah, you could his rook takes bishop and stuff. Go ahead. Okay, so you take the queen, then he'll take your queen, mm -hmm. and then you queen your e pawn. Hooray! Twenty-seven eighty. Darn! I wasn't looking at any of that at all. Mm-hmm. They said I'm a legend in Germany. I played in the Bundesliga before you were born. <laughs> I played for Dortmund in 1990. You were so thinking. Well, I just, I, think. I didn't have it, and I wasn't even looking at the right ideas, Bonarici. So maybe I was too hasty. Okay, last one. All right, I got to try to get the last one. Mm -hmm. There's no well, way. Well, if you don't get it, then we'll do another one. There's no way I can go to karaoke. So you're going? No. Should we have a poll whether you're going to go? <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, they'll have a poll and the answer is going to be fries. No, I mean, or, I... Or Buchanan or something. I um, go sometimes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just get up super early, you know, and I have to go to bed early. Mark's coming, too. Mm-hmm. And hell's coming with him. <laughs> hell's coming with him. I have my answer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, C.L. Smith. Ooh, there's a poll. I have to vote. Will Karen go to karaoke? No. <laughs> How did I do? It's, it was three to three before that. Yeah, I'm not going. You're skewing the poll. Now they're all going to vote no. <laughs> I've already said I'm not going. Yeah, but you still go. I could, and I have said I'm not going before and then changed my mind when everybody started texting me to get up there. Uh, it has happened. But what usually happens is I don't go. Right. And when Karen says she doesn't go, that makes it more likely she'll go the other Karen. <laughs> that she's definitely gone. No, she she just has a way of putting pressure and it makes me want to go. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going. No matter what anybody says. I'm going to have to insist that you go. <laughs> Yay, Charlotte Chess Center. <clears throat> hey, Peter, we were talking about you earlier. But I forgot why. Oh, yeah. Because uh, <clears throat> we looked at some games by Jeremy Silman, and one of his opponents had said Harris, and there was no other name. It didn't say John Harris or Jim Harris. So I said, well, if Peter was here, we would, we would know his first name. <clears throat> yeah, it'd be Teeter. Yeah. Oh. Harris and Teeter. Oh, okay. 
I don't know this one, darn. I'm too tired to do it. Do I have to keep looking? No, I think it's d7 and you just win the bishop. I don't think these checks amount to anything. Oh, I'm looking at d7 at all. Yeah, you just, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. I thought take with the knight, because I didn't see what the knight did. But I'm surprised only one move wins. That, that Like, one of these moves wins, the other one doesn't. That surprises me. I guess if Rook takes, he can play knight f4. And then he's got all kinds of threats. 27-30. One more, you're done. We can do one more. Okay. Since I didn't get that one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I solved it. Man. Eh? <laughs> Nobody has the same answer as me, so now I'm getting worried. Answer. Let me double check. Yeah. Okay. Because it could be something else. Yeah, that didn't even work. Now some people have the same answer as me. They're like, yeah, Ben's right. I didn't even tell my answer. But they knew. Seventy three percent said you're not going to karaoke. That's about right. Yeah, I'm not going. A rook end game book was just uh published by uh, Sam Shankland, or I don't know who published it. You can get it at samshankland.com. He has a few to pre-order. It's on theoretical rook endings. Now, he's not an IM, but still. Bonarici finally answered, so now you're allowed to answer. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm still looking. I mean, it seems like there's got to be a way to win that rook. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to figure out if I go rookie one or if I go f4. Mm -hmm. So I just wasn't really sure. Well, it's neither one. Oh, it's neither one. Yeah. You got to play the second move first. So you want to play rookie one on move two. 
but your knight's in the way. Right. So just knight takes c5. Oh. Yeah, the problem with f4 is I can play king d5. Uh, yeah, that's what and I was then, looking at. All and rook e1, I could also play king d5. And an interesting variation is rook e1, king d5, knight c3 takes, rook takes, pawn takes, rook e1, king d4, exclam, followed by king c3, king c2, and black is winning. Amazing. Right, Steel Smith? Darn. I can't calculate for shit. I knew what 3, to do. I knew what the point of this puzzle was. I just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Darn, I'm so bad. Yeah, here's the here's the variation I, I was everybody. I was I was saying. After rook e1, yeah. king d5, the only move, knight c3 check, rook takes. I was, takes. saw this. I was worried about. Yeah. Okay. And then king d4 exclam and black's winning. Yeah, I was worried that they would quit. I saw this variation. Yeah. And f4 doesn't work because it's just king d5. I was looking at that. That's why. Thank you for the second. Yeah, I saw knight c5 right away, and I'm like, yeah, that wins. Darn. I didn't see the other moves. I'm just like, that wins. Yeah. I, Yay, Jimbo Matthews. I had the right idea. I don't know why I couldn't execute. All right, who, do, who are we raiding? Chess is difficult. Looks like I know Hans, backspace. Looks like Hans N. Although they could be analyzing his tournament. Let's see who else is streaming. Hans. Nemsco, Jules Nemo, Gambit. Jules, Chess Dajan. Canty. Um, Canty. So. Oh. I don't know. We do. We've straight. Raid them all. We could do Hans again. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I did. Okay. I think, and before he was having Hannah Sace on his channel analyze his games mm -hmm. while they were going on. I don't know if he's playing right now or if there's no round. Mm -hmm. If he's playing, then. Uh, so she might still be there? Yeah, it could be. All right, cool. See you guys. See you guys uh, tomorrow. Thanks for supporting the stream. Bye.